Hey, what's up, YouTube? Today I'm going to be showing you how to bring your Buju track into 3DS Max and then back into After Effects uh, properly. We're not going to be going over any photorealistic rendering uh, or um, doing any sort of um, lights because this is mainly about the proper technique of just bringing it in so you can just get started uh, uh, putting CG objects on your live action. So I've already tracked and uh, camera solved my footage, so um, if you don't know how to do this, please watch my uh, Buju Basics tutorial. I'll provide a link to that in the description. Um, but uh, yeah, so let's go to our 3D view here, and if we can, uh, as we look around, we can see um, this is what our this is our camera up here, and it thinks that these uh, tracking points are going into the plane. So basically, this is it's thinking it's like a bird's eye view. So we have to define our scene. So um, let's go into scene geometry over here, and um, the first thing you want to do is find two points that will be good for the x-axis. So what I mean by that is you want to find two points that are straight uh, across like this. And the thing about defining scene geometry uh, is that you need you need at least two points to make uh, a coordinate because um, yeah, you need to tell Buju what is x, y, and z. And otherwise, 3ds Max won't know what to do, and it'll just import it as it is because Buju's guessing at what it is. But if we, you know, define it properly, then it should work out pretty well. So uh, I think these two would be good for the x-axis. It's not perfect, but it's fine. These two would be pretty good. Uh, two. You need. You can do more than two. Yeah, let's see what that does. All right. So we got that. We'll press Add Coordinate from Hint. Uh, we'll define that as the x connect to those two selected and update the coordinate frame and now if we go to under our 3D view we can see it's pretty close to what it actually was. It was the camera right here off the ground and the points are all the way out here. And not too many of them are scattered around but um, you probably should define more but just for the sake of time I'm not going to because the scene looks fine the way it is but um, you probably like if you were doing a professional track and you were really uh, ha really trying to define the scene you know, you would find two points that go up and down like this, and you would say that's the y-axis, update coordinate frame, it's just the same process for all of them. So now we have that, so we're just export, I'm going to export my camera solve here, and uh, you want to scale it by about a thousand, so that way we have some space to work with. And, uh, just to see where to put it, put it in the documents folder over here, and, um, that's good. Alright, so uh, I'll see you in 3ds Max. Okay, so now I'm in 3ds Max. Um, so essentially when you export your track, you're making a script. So it's basically when you run it or export it out as, um, to 3ds Max, you're running a Max script. So we'll go up here to the Max script button and we'll go to Run Script. And we're going to navigate to where our uh, footage, or not footage, but our track will be. So that will be in Libraries documents and it's the untitled project here and we'll open it up and it'll take a little while but as you can see uh, we have these tracking points and um, if we hit C in our keyboard this will bring us up to our camera view and if we play forward it's our exact footage so looks pretty good um, now to see the background if you want to place things properly we're going to go up here to views and uh, Hit viewport background, or just viewport background, viewport background, and viewport background again. And now uh, let's go and uh, let's find this. And it's this right here, it's this IFL. And uh, it's all good here. Make sure your settings are right. And hit OK. And now it'll display the background so we can see kind of where everything would be. Uh, looks pretty good. Alright, so um, I'm just going to make a simple teapot here and just drag your whatever object you can drag a helicopter whatever you want doesn't matter oh, hold on scale this down uh, alright that looks pretty big actually but um scale that down a lot alright here we go it's eh, too thin okay and then we'll just move out to review here Take this giant teapot that we made and we'll move it out way further from the camera so that way it doesn't look like it's going to kill it. There we go, and we'll just adjust those dimensions again. Okay, you're going to scale that. And, you know, just go through your process of putting whatever object, I mean, you know, you helicopter, whatever you need. And um, 
I'm probably going to go over with this photorealistic rendering process next, but now that we have our object sort of placed in the scene, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to export this. So um, we have this active time segment here. Now, uh, so we'll just go to rendering, render setup, and we have an active time segment. And uh, I'll just kind of lower my settings a little bit so that way it doesn't take so long to render. Uh, and uh, make sure active time segment is checked off. So we have that that and make sure we're rendering it out to somewhere that's really easy to find uh, all right so um yeah i'm gonna be in after effects now okay so now that you have your uh, render exported or in after effects now and uh, what you're gonna do is just drag your uh, J or png sequence or whatever sequence you made from 3ds max and just drag it into a new composition and um, it should be an active time segment. It should be moving around like your footage. And then we'll just play this back. And now what we're going to do is take our original JPEG sequence that we had, or you can be a movie file, and just drag it under it. And there we go. And I'm just going to fit this to the comp if you didn't do the same size. So transform fit to comp. And now we can see that it sticks into the scene, and we have a regular CGI object, and um, looks pretty good. Uh, you can do any color correction now and you're ready for final rendering. Um, so I'm going to go over uh, photorealistic rendering in the next tutorial and maybe how to do a helicopter uh, with motion blur and everything. But this is just the basics of going from Bougie to uh, 3ds Max into After Effects. So thank you for watching this tutorial and please be sure to subscribe and follow me on Twitter. So bye.